If you would like my dad's videos, please subscribe to QA Insights channel. Thanks for joining uh, everyone. So this week uh, we are going to discuss about uh, <clears throat> comparison between GUI based tools and the CLI based tools. So before we uh, dive into the topic, so last week we had a good discussion with uh, Eldad about uh, accessibility from performance engineering perspective. So the recording is available within the Clubhouse app, you can listen anytime. I will also publish that in a YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, before we started, yeah, this week's sponsor is uh, Redline 13. So if you want to run high scale load testing for JMeter scripts, please uh, go to redline13.com uh, to try it out for free. Okay, so this week discussion, I would like to take part as a group discussion actually. So I have a couple of points to talk and also I would like to get some uh, views from others as well. So it would be great if you raise your hands so that I can admit to the stage. Those who are new to uh, Clubhouse, uh, if you want to take part in the discussion, please raise your hand so that I can admit to the stage. Thank you, Hari, uh, for joining us. Okay, so let us get started. So first, GUI based tool. First, we will see about GUI based tools. So we are not going to talk anything about uh, any particular tool. So instead, we are uh, making trying to di have discuss about the tool agnostic. So we are not, if you want to name the tool, you can name it, but uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, yeah, presently, yes, I'm able to hear you, Hari. Yeah, Navin, uh, I have a doubt here. Yeah. So comparing them uh, like JMeter and Load Runner, which is the, which tool is the best for, uh, for testing the performance? No, we, we are not discussing that. <laughs> okay. We are not discussing uh, JMeter versus Load Runner or JMeter versus Neo Load. So there is, it's not a comparison between any tools. You got it right. The purpose of the discussion is to differentiate between the GUI based tool and CLA based tool. So nothing sort of any product. So this is a tool agnostic discussion. You got it right, Hari? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah we are not uh, going to any uh, comparison, head to head comparison between any tools. So we are going to discuss only on the uh, features whether a GUI based tool is uh, productivity, productivity uh, high or a CLI based tool gives us the productivity. So those perspective only we are going to discuss. Nothing, uh, so this discussion will not lead you to design any tool. So that purpose of discussion is not uh, that one actually. So I'm just creating awareness between CLI and GUI tools so that you can choose which gives you productivity, which gives you uh, better features, that's it. Thank you, Eldad, for joining, and thank you, Sid. So if you want to take part in the discussion, please raise your hand uh, so that I can admit to the stage. So first, we will see about uh, GUI-based tool because most of us uh, are working in the uh, GUI-based tool, and at least we would have started in uh, our career in a GUI-based tool, right? 10 years ago, 15 years ago, CLI-based tool was not uh, that much in the market. So everybody would have started with uh, either JMeter or load runner or some other tools. So if you take GUI based tool, uh, the main uh, advantage of GUI is you can see what the interface is and then you can uh, point and click and you can explore on your own. So if you want to explore a particular feature, you can go to the uh, documentation or you can just uh, uh, click some buttons, right click and then drag and drop. So those are the, <coughs> excuse me, those are the features of uh, GUI based tool, right? So this will, uh, the learning curve is little bit uh, easy to get started because we can see what's going on and if it is executing any script, uh, you can also debug easily. And uh, result analysis, again, there will be a UI to uh, analyze the results and also to design your workload model. Again, you can see what's going on. So in all the phases, you will have the uh, GUI. Uh, <coughs> so mainly, uh, for example, if we take load runner, so all the components has a GUI. And the JMeter, again, you can see the graphs, you can see uh, what is your workload model, everything you can see clearly in the tool. So this is the main advantage of uh, GUI based tool. On the other hand, if you take CLI based tool, you will not get the GUI. So only GUI is the IDE. 
So IDA could be as simple as Notepad or very complex as uh, IntelliJ. Or if you want to use some lightweight uh, editor like VS Code or Brackets or Vim, right? So then you can go for any CLI based tool and you have to write everything from scratch or you can get started with some template. You don't get the uh, UI. If you want to explore the features, only way is to read the documentation. No other way. Or you have to explore the GitHub repository for any sample code or the uh, blog articles or the website of the particular tool. So the main advantage is in CLIS, you should not uh, learn anything from the GUI perspective. Only thing you have to learn the language. And if you are a Java, Java expert, or if you are a, a JavaScript expert, so it will be very easy to get started. So I have interacted with many developers. So what they will tell is they, most of the developers, they hate the GUI. They don't uh, like uh, anything uh, with Windows. So most of the developers, what they do is out of curiosity, they will uh, start their own performance testing. So what they do is they will select tools like uh, Gatling or Locust, and then they will embed the scripts into their development pipeline just to test with 10 threads or 100 threads. And then they will always, in the meeting, right, they will say, we have already tested the performance, uh, but I would like to deep dive into other aspects. So they would have not tested the performance, actually. They would have run some smoke load testing locally, but still uh, some developers out of curiosity, they use the CLI based tools only. They don't go with any GUI based tool because it gels well with the uh, flow for them. And most of the, um, uh, at least uh, out of uh, 10 out of uh, six developers I have spoken, they always select uh, Gatling. So uh, they don't go with uh, other tools. I don't know why because they feel mostly they develop in uh, Java and then they, they just write in uh, Scala. So it's very easy for them. And also the results and the HTML report, everything very simple and easy to get started. So that's why uh, they told uh, most of the developers I have interacted, uh, they choose uh, Gatling. So these are the main differences between GUI based and CLI based. And in GUI based, you will have a lot of features like protocols. Right, because nowadays we work in uh, HTTP, but other protocols like gRPC and then uh, sometimes uh, publishing and subscribing uh, uh, architecture, and then uh, we have a lot of other protocols like uh, MQTT. Right, so in if you take GUI based tools, uh, mostly commercial, they always uh, supports multiple uh, protocols. On the other hand, if you take any CLI based tool, uh, like say for example uh, Locust right, or uh, K6. So you have to search for the library for a particular protocol implementation. So for example, if you take Locust, you need to search for in the uh, library in pip. So if you want to write, uh, say, uh, MQTT, then there should be a library for MQTT, or you have to implement the MQTT concepts uh, within your Python code. So that will take a couple of days or a couple of weeks based on your knowledge about the architecture and uh, the application, how MQTT works. Or if somebody would have written, uh, if there is a GitHub repository available, then you need to import the library and you need to try and uh, see whether it is working fine or not. But again, there are disadvantages and advantages. The code might be outdated or it might have bugs. You might not know unless you uh, test it, right? So there are lots of uh, ifs and buts uh, if you are relying on the third party library or sometimes uh, your company will not approve for the particular library. Security team will say, okay, I cannot approve this library because of the vulnerability. So in that case, you have to just refer the library and you can impl implement your own uh, module. So it will take some time. So if you take that approach, you may end up more time in spending the uh, writing the code and testing it. So it will impact your uh, deliverables. But on the other hand, if you take uh, any uh, Jmeter like tools, so it is there are a lot of plugins available already, and you can have to just download and uh, test it and uh, implement your own workload model on that. So th this is the main again another difference between the uh, GUI and CLI based tools. So mainly the protocols. So protocols you have to choose 
whether you want to go with the uh, CLI based tool, whether you want to write your own implementation or you are going to leverage the already existing uh, protocols in your commercial tool or open source uh, flavor. Any questions guys in this uh, two topics? So one is the GUI we have discussed, the uh, visualizing the elements and then the protocols. So any, uh, discuss, any points I have missed or any from your perspective, what do you think about these two points? Hey, Navin. Hi, Hi, yeah, thanks I said, for I held that. Thanks for joining. Hello. Yeah, then you yes, can sir. go ahead. Speaking? Yeah, yes, sir, you can go ahead, please. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for bringing up that nice topic, uh, uh, Navin. And uh, yeah, uh, you covered two points, and <clears throat> I have a question. Yes. Like, uh, in your experience, I have not uh, dealt with any CLI tools much, but except Jemeter. And uh, yeah, my question is, have you ever used uh, CLI tools in front-end performance testing as well? Front-end? What, uh, what is the coverage of uh, CLI tools there? Uh, actually, I have tried briefly uh, the flood, uh, Flood's framework called Element for the front-end performance. So it is like, a, you can think of like a Selenium wrapper, okay, on a high level. Okay, so what it will do is it will launch the browser, it will click and then it will give you the response time. So I have briefly worked for my knowledge, uh, I mean nothing for the, uh, uh, for any project. Yeah, I was under the assumption that uh, there, were no, there is no CLI for uh, front-end testing because most of the tools I use in the front-end testing from the Chrome, Chrome Utilities, Chrome Adams and Fiddler, Firebug and uh, any developer tools and Vyslow, page page slow some kind yes. of tool. yes uh, so, because performance in the front end testing right we need to see the visually the component level we need a ui for there that's what i i was i was having the gut feeling correct so uh, uh, element io i don't i don't think they are maintaining it uh, regularly nowadays but uh, alternative front you have uh, k6 so k6 they released the new uh, library called uh, xk6 browser Okay, using this library, you can test the front-end performance using JavaScript. So that means uh, it's compared to tool, a number of tools available is less compared to the I mean, back-end performance thing in the CLI. Correct. Front-end performance is less. Yes, correct. You, that point I thought of bringing up. Thanks. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, yes, yeah. For the CLI perspective, yes. Uh, even for the UI, GUI, uh, I, I feel true client is the best tool for the UI performance. Uh, yeah, again, uh, again, GUI based uh, uh, front end performance tools are less. Yeah, true client, when you bring up true client, I think uh, it will also cover the automation testing. <laughs> it's, yes, really, it's really good pool, but uh, in the memory perspective, it's a heavyweight though. But, uh, okay. Yes, all front end uh, usually memory intensive. Yeah, thanks, Tamil. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jagan, for joining. Hi, Eldad. You can go ahead. Hey, how are you doing, Evan? I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for joining. It's, it's a really good topic, I think. Uh, and now, um, as far as the comparison between uh, UI tools and uh, code-based tools, or you call it C CLI tools because you, uh, ev you eventually going to execute them from the CLI, but I think they can be also be conceptualized as code-based tools. Uh, I, I think I have two uh, more points to add to this. First of all, the I think the code-based tools are easier to integrate with um, with the, the source uh, source control um, uh, systems like Git or SVN or uh, whatever kind of source control system you use. It's easier to integrate uh, and, and you know to get diffs. And uh, if if you change some code, you can easily track trace it back. To uh, earlier versions, so this is another advantage: the integration with uh, with their source control or or version control. This is another name for this. Um, and I think that in in some sense, when if if the code is too complex, it's very difficult to visually parse it. Uh, when you have a lot of logic or you have a lot of cases, 
uh, visually parsing all these elements is not always ideal, is not always easy. So this would be another uh, advantage to the uh, code base or CLI tools. Uh, as for uh, particularly Locust, I take Locust as an example because, because I have experimented with that more. Uh, the main problem with Locust is it's based on the asynchronous I.O. Uh, module of, of Python. And one problem that you're going to get out of it, uh, it's, it's a long discussion. I, I'm not going to dive into all the technical details. But one problem you get with the asynchronous I.O. is if you accidentally... Um, inserted a blocking code. Okay, so a, a code that is not fit to work with a sync IO, it's going to block the entire program. That's so, it, it, yeah, so if, yeah. if you added some code of your own to, I don't know, to do some Selenium stuff or MQTT, as you mentioned, you're going to block the entire thing. Uh, it's not going to be concurrent and it's not going to be a real load. So yes, you need the, the custom custom code uh, to help you uh, run those particular pr protocols that you want. And there is one repository called Locust Plugins uh, that has all, all these different protocols. Uh, allegedly, I did not experiment with all of them, but allegedly it has all these extension protocols that you can use. Now, you mentioned correctly that sometimes our organization would not be very happy to do that, uh, but it, it is a thing to consider that there are these plugins that can be used. Uh, Jmeter has, uh, and again, Jmeter is just my proxy for uh, GUI-based tools because this is the one that I've experimented with. It does have the advantage of more flexibility because it's thread-based. Okay, so because it's thread-based, you don't have to worry about blocking the entire uh, program. But of course, we talked about it uh, before and we're going to mention it again. Threads are extremely resource intensive. They take a lot of computational resources. So that would be the disadvantage for uh, for the GUI-based tool in this respect. Yes, yes Eldad. Yeah, thank you, Eldad, for bringing up uh, multiple points. So I would like to uh, give some info about that version control uh, thing, right? So I remember clearly uh, Loadrunner, right? So they implemented the Git integration very late. Actually, Git was famous before that. I mean, it's been very famous for more than two to three decades. But the Loadrunner integration came uh, only at 11.0 something. So during that time only they integrated with the menu. So we go to some VCS or uh, Git menu, right, in the uh, view gen. There you can see Git uh, that init and then pull, push, so those things. So before that we were doing it manually, actually. So we have to go to that folder. We have to initialize uh, using Git init and then uh, we have to push it. We have to do it from the behind the scenes. And then they implemented that feature. So it came late in the game. Yeah, yeah, I, I, to I totally agree with that. It's exactly what I've experienced too. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, as you mentioned again for the uh, libraries, right? Because I have seen multiple organizations, uh, there will be a security team, right? So they will uh, give you the heads up okay, whether you can use this library or not. Suppose uh, if they are not, uh, it's an approved uh, list, right? Then uh, it will block you immediately. You will get an email next day or next week. Okay, we have detected that uh, these libraries in your system, please delete it. <laughs> right, so uh, it's very yeah. uh, st a very stringent process to get it approved. Yeah, yes, it is. Uh, it could happen with some of the JMeter plugins, but it's very unlikely. It's very unlikely to happen with the JMeter plugins because it's all internally. You don't need some uh, other uh, source control to bring or some other dependencies to bring. Uh, imagine that sometimes they have, you know, like a third tier or fourth tier uh, dependency, um, a dependency tree. So if you say uh, the Locust plugin dealing with Selenium, it depends on uh, Selenium, and it, that depends on uh, the uh, WS3 protocol that they use and all the other, um, uh, you know, yes. second tier, yeah, third tier, fourth tier yes. dependency. So it could be troublesome. It yes, is yeah, troublesome. Uh, yes, yeah, the deep, uh, the tree level will be very deep. Yeah. Yeah, it, it does do go on, go on, go on. I mean, like log4j, right? So, <laughs> so yeah. a lot of dependencies are there. Yeah. Mm. Uh, with this topic, Navin, I would like to bring like a, a point here. So every GUI tool uh, will have the CLI f feature, but not CLI. Every CLI will have the GUI feature, right? Uh, yes. I mean, first point, uh, uh, kind of okay because uh, yeah, load runner uh, they, they because they implement very late. Uh, Sid. the CLI feature mm -hmm. will come uh, followed by the first GUI feature, then CLI feature. 
So yeah, the CLI think, feature, uh, yeah, right? the main reason uh, CLI coming up into the point is to avoid the memory issues. And uh, yeah, like you said, developers are flexible with the uh, CLI and uh, to avoid the heavy usage and licensing perspective. What do you, what are the other things you think? No, the CLI tool, as you mentioned, right, for GUI, basically it will be for CI, CD purpose and then uh, mm-hmm. uh, to mm-hmm. process some uh, report, those things. You cannot... Uh, uh, run it or you can you cannot just uh, design your uh, flow from there yep yep and what are the other things uh, cli means here cli come into the uh, limelight you think okay for example another point i can i just noted down is the installation process so gui installation process again you need to download the exe file uh, from the uh, official repository then you have to follow the uh, wizard right so that is there, but uh, on the other hand, CLI based tool, just one command, like say pip install, or you can just download the sudo apt, right? So those things are very easy, but on the other hand, uh, nowadays, I mean, not nowadays, I mean, it's been there for many years for load runner. So load runner, they have a concept called silent installation. I don't know how many of you use this feature. So they have a silent installation tag. If you just send this uh, in the command line, it will silently install in the backend. So usually the administrators and then those who maintain the fleet of computers, they will uh, have this kind of script in their uh, uh, Windows uh, patch command. So it will silently install on your machine. So again, installation process, uh, CLI based tool is, makes our lives very easy because if you want to run something in your, uh, say Jenkins node or GitHub uh, actions, uh, just mention this command and then yeah, that's it. So you don't even uh, send the sudo command because everything will be taken care of by your CACD tool. But on the other hand, uh, load runner installation or load generator installation, right? So it, it may need some additional uh, privilege or some other uh, changing the port numbers or some network firewall. So those things are there uh, when it comes to GUI based installations. And uh, how about the designing part? Which one you do you think uh, flexible to design? Is a CLI or GUI? As See, different, that, I said design, designing the load model. It depends. Uh, see, uh, people who likes always in the terminal, right, development, uh, full-time developers, they don't want to uh, go to another GUI to design their workload model. So yeah. they can just embed uh, everything as a code. Again, a low-cost or a K6, right? So they have, uh, it is totally customizable. So you, you, uh, if you take uh, Loadrunner or uh, JMeter, right? We have only particular set of plugins, which will give you the uh, workload uh, uh, customization. If you want something very, uh, very, very uh, what unique to your need, then you need to design something on your own. But uh, K6 and all K6 Holocaust, it's totally customizable based on your need. Yeah, uh, bringing up that point. So I have uh, one last question. I think let's other two also to participate. So when everything is moving to the cloud perspective, so what, which tools are dominating in the cloud level? Cloud like platform, I mean uh, running yeah. tool in the cloud or? Yeah, 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 running tool in the cloud. Basically we call it as cloud performance testing in our performance testing terminology, right? So uh, JMeter is there all, already. So JMeter yeah, is there. Yeah. Again, Lodana, they have Storm Runner uh, flavor and uh, again, Blaze Meter. We have Redline 13. So it yes, totally yes. Uh, depends on uh, the budget uh, and then uh, the approved uh, tools for their organization. A lot of factors. And, uh, I'm, talking, I'm sticking to the topic like uh, CLI. Most of them are CLI or GUI? Like, CLI gels like, with CACD, right? So I guess CLI. Yeah, yeah, that's my point. Yeah. So because in the, when coming to the cloud, when the cloud comes, Agile comes into play. When the Agile comes, CI/CD will come into play. Yeah. Yes, if you want to run, say, Kubernetes, uh, right? Mm-hmm. So, so when, if you have CLI feature, you can just add that command. That's it. Yeah. Right? If, uh, on the other hand, you have to rely on uh, commercial tools CLI. So they should have some CLI package. For example, uh, NeoLoad. NeoLoad has a CLI in Python. So I have completely automated using that CLI for my CI/CD uh, in my previous organization. So if they don't have CLI, then I need to rely on the REST uh, services. So I have to write my own bash for each REST call. Okay, create the scenario, uh, create the uh, LGs, uh, then so run the when scenario. When you say CLI in, with the near load, you use for only for running the load test, right? Running the load test uh, and then a CACD integration. Yeah, 
yeah designing yeah. script and designing, all you use no they support lot of features cli has a lot of uh, implementations okay so you can create a scenario you can download report you can uh, create some sls compare it so you can do lot of automations using the cli okay. but for the main uh, script designing you need to rely on the gui you cannot do uh, scripting uh, using the cli true, true. cli that is only to interact the, uh, yeah yeah that is a key point uh, which is missing in the cli compared to gui yep yeah, yeah thank you yeah, jagan for joining me. yeah thank you jagan yeah please go ahead jagan hello hi am i audible yes yes you are audible yeah, fine again hello everyone yeah so uh, this topic is brings me to uh, to join this call because uh, i am joining from singapore it almost like a midnight but uh, the topic right, which i was going through for last uh, couple of month so i was in a transforming from the gui tool to cli i am picking k6 and i'm uh, i'm working on the framework and script development so which extensively good compared to uh, my earlier uh, the, the project or the gui projects because uh, cli is equitable to run from command line and c cd and also it easy to integrate with any any ex- existing uh, pipelines right? so that's i could see as advantage uh, and uh, other than that like one or one on the topic i i saw like a query from sid right like a, any other tool cli tool for a, a front end based testing right so uh, i was exploring like uh, i haven't come concluded but i i, I did a um, small poc with the lighthouse and uh, uh, puppetry right so that uh, that gives some 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 sort of uh, uh, flexibility with the cli based front end performance testing because they are using like like as we are using lighthouse uh, the library rate we could be able to get uh, uh, metrics as like uh, uh, the browser based report so what is your you uh, you thought on it yes yeah puppet tier and lighthouse yeah it's a great tools uh, for the cl i mean for the front end performance but uh, uh, you if you, since you are in k6 right you can try uh, xk6 uh, browser so there's okay. a newly released plugin it's in still in beta stage so it will have some uh, if uh, defects but uh, you can uh, try to explore that and then you can gel with your uh, k6 uh, flow yeah uh, yes i explored the k6 as well but uh, what i see differences like a, a lighthouse they have the lighthouse maintained by google right? so they have a list of checklist as like a, how we are doing security testing is the oas right the top 10 security right? similar way like those they have the top 10 performances based on the they who they do have the recommendations so it will be it will be like a floated like a, uh, as long the like google the google maintaining that uh, the checklist right so that's how i got recommendation from the development team because uh, we can live as like a as per the trend so after three months yes, we don't yes jagan so the uh, lighthouse right it's more mature tool so that's why uh, people uh, usually go with the Uh, yeah. Google's choice, right? Uh, and Google is the leader, and then uh, uh, Lighthouse is one of the matured uh, uh, tool from Google team. So yeah, there is no harm in going with Lighthouse. You can uh, you can still continue to run your tests. But uh, on the other hand, uh, since you are in K6, so that's why I proposed the XK6. Okay. But XK6 to reach that level, it will take a couple of uh, years. Yeah, sure. Yeah, the, that's something. Yeah, Thanks thank you, Jagan, for joining. Thank you. okay okay so we have discussed your protocols we have discussed the gui and the installation part so next is uh, reporting so reporting again uh, uh, you know right gui so you can generate the report and then you can view your graphs uh, charts uh, from the ui itself and then you can deep dive into your uh, metrics you can slice and dice so the lot of features in the gui but on the other hand what i have seen is G- uh, in the cli based tools you will get only the basics uh, uh, output so basically it will be simple html or table or some graphs that's it if you want to interact then uh, it might not be possible so interact means uh, say i want to slice compare and then i want to uh, apply some logic into that right or if you want to correlate uh, two graphs or multiple graphs or three dimensional graphs so these are the features uh, i don't see it in the uh, cli based tools so as uh, k6 as they they have their own uh, interface but again uh, that interface is only for paid customers i guess so correct me if i am wrong elder uh, 
it's only for k6 cloud customers it is for free only for up to 50 tests i guess after that you need to become a customer uh, on the other hand locust they have a html report again it's a simply a basic html jmeter also has the reporting part again it's a html based reports so cli based tools if you see the reporting is very uh, limited i would say but you can uh, download the raw data and then you can put it in your own uh, uh, implementation for example grafana or uh, if you have a paid uh, customer to tableau so tableau again it a very powerful visualization or if you want to put it in influx db you can put it so and then you can explore uh, there but you have to maintain the infrastructure if you want to compare two graphs or two dashboards then you need to have some kind of implementation but on the other hand, uh, Neo Load or uh, Load Runner, they have a dedicated tool for analysis itself where you can do a deep dive into your uh, metrics. And then uh, you can uh, write some custom metrics as well uh, to your graph. And again, K6 also supports custom metrics, custom trend. So they have a lot of features for the custom. Again, JMeter also push the custom metrics. But again, deep diving, you need to have something uh, very sophisticated uh, tool for the reporting part. So these are the some of the differences I have seen uh, with respect to reporting. So uh, view gen, sorry, uh, load and analysis, it's still uh, legacy. Uh, even today also you can see the same UI, but it is powerful. It, it has a lot of features. People don't use it fully. That's what I feel. Uh, say uh, if you want to correlate, right? Uh, there's a feature, but uh, I don't see people using it uh, very completely. Correct. Correct. So these are the things. I, yes, Seth. Yes. Uh, correct. You said uh, that point you mentioned. Analysis is like ocean. Nobody, I'm sure, nobody else is used completely. I mean, unless until fully, they're monitoring for the entire end-to-end project. Correct. Because uh, they just create graphs. They copy. They paste. Yeah, that's it. And uh, one more topic I would like to bring up here. It could be helpful for other. So, what do you? What type of skills? Special skills as me as a performance engineers, testers need to have as a GI tool as CLI. I think it would be better. Blend of blend of both. <laughs> At least blend of both, uh, because yeah. otherwise the one perspective only you see, other perspective you lose. Yeah. Right. If you want to see the complete picture of an art, you should uh, see it from all the angles, from left to right, back to front. Right, the same holds for the tools perspective also. So if you want to fully uh, get some uh, 360 degree view, then you should try at least, uh, that's what I always tell people, okay, learn at least two tools. At least learn the concepts from for two tools, uh, either uh, commercial or load, uh, open source. Always learn two tools in any field, uh, performance, security, uh, automation, or development, anything, at least learn two things. So one thing if you, or missing, you will get the other thing uh, as an advantage. So uh, that's why I always try to learn balance both. Yeah, uh, I, I will, uh, excuse, I'm sorry to barge in like this, uh, Naveen. I totally agree that you should experiment with both. And not only because it's important to learn both, but it's also important to learn how to learn. You Correct. need to practice how to learn new things. Because today you might say, okay, there is the code stuff and there is the GUI stuff. In the future, you, you might have some new things coming to the market. And, and you need, if, if you're not uh, trained in learning new things, uh, it's going to be a lot more difficult for you to adapt in the long run. So yeah, learn how to learn. That's a very important skill. Correct. And also, there is a book actually, Eldad, uh, How to Learn and Unlearn. I don't know whether you've heard, you heard, I've heard of the book? topic. I'm not, it doesn't ring a lot of bell, but I'm sure there are a lot of books on, on this, this topic of how yeah. to learn. How to learn and unlearn. Unlearning means uh, you, whatever you learned, you have to just uh, reveal how to use it, how to showcase uh, yeah. that uh, whole process. Yeah, you know, there's data, it's just the point uh, of the points that, that you have around. There is knowledge, okay, it's the ability to connect all these dots together. And there is application, the ability to use this knowledge in the real world. So all three of them are important. Correct, correct, yes. So actually, uh, yeah, since I mentioned about the book, uh, I recently joined one uh, uh, book house, book clubhouse. So I can send you the link in my LinkedIn. Uh, it is called DevOps Book Club. So every month uh, they pick one book and then they discuss about uh, DevOps, performance, automation. So those Very things. 
so i can uh, yeah i will just share it in the linkedin uh, publicly so that uh, if you are interested uh, folks can join it, it, it sounds very interesting yeah thank you so anything uh, re- regarding reporting i am missing or any thoughts reporting between uh, cla and gua um i think that another thing to look at is not just uh testing you know for a, a testing environment we also so, very often test in production we run some minor performance tests a uh, very low scale right in production to see how they how well we perform in production um i think it, maybe it's more related to site reliability engineering than it is to performance engineering but you know the two things overlap uh so uh, i think that uh reporting is also important in this respect when you test on production and you want you know a quick feedback so i think integration with tools like slack or ms teams uh, or, or all the other not quick notifications uh um uh, bot tools uh are also important in, in this respect of, of testing in production uh, yes elder so uh, we uh, i used uh... neuralink synthetic monitor for that purpose so we have something automated uh, steps which will always repeat in the production and then we can uh, we will see the uh, results in our uh, neuralink dashboard so is it similar similarly is it similar thing you are talking about uh, yeah neuralink is is one monitoring system i think it's observability systems and it could then integrate with ms teams and stuff like that datadog is another example it's also another pipeline that we have just implemented of um monitoring in in production so we're slamming the production environment with a very small load and mm-hmm. then we send the notification to data data dog and then it propagates to all the other notification um uh and n- notification instruments that we have yes so, yeah, yeah yeah these features nowadays we have it in the observability tools itself so yeah, yeah. i don't think uh, uh, yeah I, i am not write, writing anything uh, specifically for that because uh, we have neuralink interface right again it's a javascript you have to just write your uh, javascript logic there and then uh, neuralink will execute yeah uh, for you okay yeah that that's uh, yeah now again dynatrace every tool every vendor uh, they have uh, the synthetic monitor feature yeah yeah they they have to yes <laughs> correct so uh, any uh, inputs synth from your side on synthetic monitoring did uh, have you implemented for your client uh, uh we are not uh, implemented separately but uh, we do have the same funda like uh, when we when the our like i i keep on saying that right? in the microsoft world, microservice world so what we do is we monitor through splunk for the initial uh two months and then we left from there okay okay got it it's kind of synthetic monitoring only but it's like real monitoring when the okay. app when your microservice is deployed we continuously monitor till the all the clients enrolled for it then it. we will see and the monitoring and we observe okay. it and we do have the dashboards in the splunk so now the nowadays dashboards is everywhere right correct so, correct yeah, that is a we are getting the report from there and okay so oh, since you mentioned about splunk uh, i don't know whether you read this news last week uh, there was a news floating around in the industry uh, cisco is trying to buy splunk yes i heard <laughs> so something <laughs> billion or 20 billion dollars something some uh, number i have seen i remember uh, yeah i think splunk turned down the offer i don't know <laughs> yeah. they were looking for something more than uh, 20 billion dollars yes yes yeah cisco uh, stock prices went up uh, on that day yeah uh, yeah um... <laughs> and i uh, already cisco has uh, app dynamics and also they bought uh, espagon so i don't know whether you heard this uh, tool espagon so espagon is again a observability tool okay uh, uh, apm and observability tool uh, but i i don't know why cisco bought espagon again uh, when they have app dynamics oh so, uh, cisco is also buying app dynamics app dynamics already bought they bought already so that is the reason and for your information because appd earlier we used to have the app Uh, appd as an app and mm-hmm. now it's moving to saas okay okay it's totally moving to saas uh, which uh, earlier the uh, yeah since the topic came so earlier we could uh, directly call the reports into the tool like uh, appd into the load runner let's say lre 
we could able to configure that uh, abd url and configure the counters and monitors and we could able to integrate the overall report but okay. that feature is now not there since abd is moving to sas whereas uh, dynatrace in the lre they have two options dynatrace as an app dynatrace as it's a, a sas yeah, correct yeah so maybe probably abd as a sas should be coming to picture right this okay good but as plank is very expensive uh, very expensive tool uh, i i read on twitter uh, a, a comedy i mean joke whether cisco mm-hmm. is trying to buy one year subscription or they are going to buy uh, a lifetime subscription for 20 billion dollars <laughs> <laughs> so there was a uh, yeah it was very uh, trend at the time uh, last week in twitter in cisco current, buying uh, plank coming to that point sir, nowadays every tool is implementing all the feature from the observable to to real mon- real user monitoring tool and everything features they are i don't know where it's going to end there is a cases i mean like a big uh, companies they end up with two or three monitoring tools and observability tools correct correct yes yeah it depends on what what you want right from the tool yeah yes. but uh, mostly i work dynatrace neuralic app dynamics so these three uh, frequently i hear from uh, many of my friends and uh, Uh, colleagues in the previous companies right uh, these three dominates the most so yeah being uh, coming to the sticking to the topic so how does that uh, monitoring tools will integrate with the cli tools what is the flexibility of integrating those into the cli or calling this cli into the data that, that dashboard is there any no actually you don't integrate the uh, i mean uh, the way of integration means so the two things integrations right one is from your app server integration and uh, from the tool integration from the tool so basically what we do is we uh, tag it right so we just uh, tag our request so that we can filter out uh, our traffic uh, in our dashboard neuralic or dynatrace whatever dashboard we are using so we can filter out based on some uh, key value pair so that we can see only our traffic information and yeah, on the other hand tagging the geometer request into the abd or dynatrace right yes it's just a matter of header i mean no need to have something okay. very sophisticated plugin or uh, some code uh, yeah. unless uh, the tool is expecting uh, you to send in some format uh, for example dynatrace expects uh, something like a x dynatrace and a x uh, transaction name something like that yeah. but uh, otherwise you can just put something like uh, you can send whatever key value pair you can just tell the development team okay this is my key value pair uh, please whitelist so that uh, it will just uh, accept from the server side so that's a very simple way of uh, implementing the integration uh, but uh, yeah nothing uh, sophisticated you don't need uh, loadrunner has their own uh, runtime settings if you go and check that box uh, it will integrate with dynatrace and if you want to integrate with app dynamics or neuralic you have to send it the appropriate uh, request headers so integration is straight forward it's very minimal effort required uh, it's not uh, very complex to integrate with uh, whether ca ca whether cli or gui doesn't matter the effort is very minimal so i i, am, I was thinking like uh, these tools right gui and cli so can, mm-hmm. can we classify this as a front end and back end with a, <laughs> i no, don't front end uh, back no we cannot right <laughs> yeah because what i'm thinking like all cli is just api to run your load test in somewhere correct but uh, yeah, front end means the the term itself it's different right front end means the user is facing and whatever the user is experiencing uh, browser is experiencing so those yeah, metrics i mean like we also like graphical user interface it's a face of that uh, load testing you're running whereas we, your cli will run in the background behind the scenes right correct but again no whenever you run a load test using load run load runner the lg is sending the request right it's not your tool true, 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 true. yeah so the load is coming from some other place not from your system you just design your thing in your uh, computer okay in that point uh, this say uh, this leads to how about the cli distributed is k6 and everything they have the distribution through cli yes CLI? yeah all the cli they have a distributed uh, a mode actually k6 uh, locust it's very simple to implement the distributed uh, mode compared oh. to other uh, uh, tools jmeter again you need to put lot of effort uh, to have something uh, distributed yeah, in uh, uh, machines and everything yeah correct and, and then you have to enable the communication between uh, your uh, uh, main machine and then uh, controller to worker and then you have to open the port uh, network firewall should be uh, uh, to and fro communication should be there so a lot of uh, network uh, team will has to involve 
otherwise you have to create something very closed uh, vpc uh, and then it should communicate within the same vpc but on so other hand uh, all yeah. load generator features and everything remain same right uh, so, uh, navin yes the right. the uh, how it works is the same okay right okay. on a high level but the way it works is different okay got it makes sense can you give the example of uh, in the cli Sorry. how do you mention uh, how do you mention the location for the yeah uh, for uh, for example if you take locust or k6 so k6 mm -hmm. cloud okay using only k6 cloud you can implement the distributor you need to be a paid customer so jagan okay. correct me if i am wrong uh, i don't think k6 open source uh, supports the distributed version correct so uh, yes love it. so but ultimately k6 by uh, Uh, by natively, it won't support a distributed uh, execution as like a JMeter, right? Correct. It won't support. So even K6 Cloud also, what they're doing, they're spinning up with the different machine. Uh, like on top of, uh, they have written some logic to, uh, based on the metrics, they will uh, they will uh, allocate the load in the individual machines. So every there is a no controller as like a JMeter or load runner. But okay. uh, what what it will do? It will it will it will Passing all the result to one one cloud DB. From that, they they have a their own commercial version of K6 Cloud, which will present the result output. So okay. what I'm implementing now is like uh, uh, due to security in my company, so I can't go to K6 Cloud. So I I took few uh, GCP machines and I'm I'm trying with like uh, uh, some Kubernetes. Uh, so K6 also they're giving like a K6 operator. Right? so i am trying to implement that portion but uh, uh, it's like a, we are using a three different machine and uh, running independently and the, the result will be pushed to one centralized db from there i am using grafana to visualize it so you are using your gcp as a load generator <coughs> correct yes yes, yes. because uh, uh, yeah okay so uh, by default uh, we, you cannot integrate your gcp in your k6 cloud Uh, no, actually, K6 uh, Cloud they are using AWS, and yes. they even I am not sure like how they are customizable. Uh, I am not sure on it because uh, the machine allocation everything is like a hidden portion. So uh, I am not sure on it to be honest. Okay, so it is not like Redline 13 where you can use your own infrastructure. So you have to use only K6 infrastructure. Yes, yes, it's like a dashboard where we have the code. And the, we have a dashboard where we can pick the geolocation and allocation like a forty, thirty percent degree kind of. Okay. Once we we from the dashboard, once we give, give a submit, so the backend the their own AWS machines, so which will spin up the script. Got it. Got it. Okay. Cool. Thank you, Jagan. So Sid, yeah. And about, so yes, Jagan, please. Uh, sorry about reports, right? Yeah. Again, I still I'm currently I'm using K6, so. What is the flexibility I got? Like uh, we can create a different type of report. One is like a realistic, like interactive uh, Grafana I'm using, like uh, as of now. But uh, uh, um, uh, that is interactive report which can which we can interact. Like uh, we can do the comparison of the uh, the day one, day two, the results comparison. We can customize it. And another report, ideally, what I'm got like uh, they are expecting like uh, the the non still non non developers like uh, the business stakeholders, right? So for them, I'm I'm giving like a HTML report which will give like a high level matrix like a how many requests, how many checks, uh, like a which is easy to understand the non non tech person side. Right? So okay. the HTML report and also since I'm using C C D, I'm I'm I could able to convert to JNET report also because I'm using Jenkins. So I need to something which can be understand by the Jenkins. So Jenkins uh, they explain JSON. So I mean, there are there is a plugins uh, K6 uh, since it's open source right there are a few plugins available I could able to convert the same the same the output to JSON uh, JSON which will be on the J unit as a, um, the, the the report so all three I am doing in the same uh, same job so that's where I can see like uh, um, so Jagan more than like uh, looks like uh, it's a uh, GUI right K6 is more into GUI. Uh, no, no, like no, it's a CLA. no, 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 no,
okay uh, the geo location so what i mentioned is it like that is from k6 cloud the commercial tool so mm-hmm. which we have to buy it so that is a geo like a, yeah. their own dashboard uh, but the script is k6 uh, script right that is can be done within uh, with the open source which can which should be like a, a cli tool you can use any editor any writer and then just uh, write it okay makes sense thanks jack cool so uh, yes sid so back to your point uh, yeah the distributed mode right uh, yeah k6 again you have to go with the op- uh, commercial flavor but on other hand we have uh, locust uh, so for example if you take locust so locust distribution mode is very simple it is very straightforward uh, no need to follow any kind of instructions like in jmeter just a few commands uh, you will be good with the distribution mode uh, everything from cli command so no nothing uh no ui at all so that that means even including the load balancing in the load balancing mm-hmm. everything everything is cli commands oh super super so that's exactly. what i was wondering like uh, have you there should be a control kind of stuff in the cli right so it could so as per you it has to be done through the commands yeah it's a main uh, yeah they have a master and uh, that worker Uh, right uh, you, you have to just add keep adding the worker uh, nodes uh, and then uh, yeah you can th- th- just like docker swarm so docker swarm if you know uh, right how it works uh, kubernetes okay. same model okay. yeah thanks nabin okay so sure reporting we have seen protocols gui so we have touched a lot of points so any other main distinction anybody think of CACD again. We have seen CACD, so that is also touched. Any other yeah, points? Yeah, but uh, yeah, I think uh, wherever the CACD is there in the implemented in all the projects in your companies which you are going or playing, you have to get ready with uh, a CLI. It seems right. Correct. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Loadrunner also they have CLI tools. I don't know whether you guys checked in the bin folder. Yeah, so yeah. there are a lot of EXEs are there, but yeah, people are not using it. <laughs> so but yeah load run also has a lot of uh, uh, cli inside the package yes and uh, jagan k6 all uh, by default it will give json right but why you need a j unit uh, uh, you report uh, uh, yes uh, navin like if you want to extract a set test output right to give a json but uh, in a j in a jenkins right Uh, it should it need some framework to uh, evaluate our report right so that we can oh, okay. see like a success okay. pass or so based on the it's like as part of the pipeline so on upon peer committee right so automatically take a call like whether you go for can code can merge or not right so Correct. for that we need some framework like whether jnl to the plugin can help for that i need to feed as a jnl xml output so okay so, okay got it okay and uh, i mean uh, since uh, you are in k6 uh, you, so do, do you, you are you using a uh, grafana cloud as well uh well not i mean so i'm very initial stage like uh, like i'm in a poc so not not even this uh, like i almost started the journey so as of now i'm using like a complete internal setup only uh, okay. we had a internal uh, in our org we, we have internal uh, grafana in fact it be everything so it's this is scalable playable so uh, we are not going any anything like a uh, due to data security we couldn't uh, we can move out of the our our, our own infra okay so you're testing microservices right now using k6 oh uh, sorry mean microservices rest uh, services or uh, which protocol you are using in k6 uh, microservices like uh, microservices so okay. you have to okay. uh, yeah cool thank you jagan for sharing the insights any other points held that sid uh, to discuss yeah so when cla coming i have one i was thinking but uh, when the cla coming to the picture so how how it will be different from the linux versus windows linux is more uh, kind of uh, i would say lightweighted and uh, no need to have something license constraints uh right. no let's say, let's say there is a lotus uh, gem let's take an example of jmeter there is a jm uh, jmx file you want to learn it run it from the windows linux. machine or and linux how do you test linux <laughs> yeah, no no okay that's fine uh, that's your experience experience so what is the differences you feel when it running from the windows versus 
Linux and uh, the, how could be the de- different in command versus and command is same. Linux command is uh, agnostic. A platform agnostic. Okay. How about the, 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 the way it works is different. Sometimes Windows will give a lot of uh, what I can say some kind of block blockers will be there uh, like connections or network related issues will be there for windows mm-hmm. because i have tried locally windows mm-hmm. always give some uh, issues unless you know good in networking to troubleshoot uh, you have to spend more, a lot of time to fix that but linux on the other hand again it's a command mm-hmm. just to open networks firewall list add remove uh, and a reset so everything can be done via bash script and you will be good to go for 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 the next based machines so for jmeter did you observe the point which i say was i, I was thinking of for example as front end and back end so when it comes to linux only cli when it's if you want gui only windows not, not yeah only windows right no linux has again if you want to use ubuntu you can yeah, use you ubuntu can, but yeah but no, not uh, much widely used right like windows for gui purpose at least but uh, docker if you say if you are relying on docker containers kubernetes everything most of them are linux based containers yeah if you want something I'm... windows you have to create it for windows uh, say uh, for example jmeter uh, there is a github repository uh, just before i i think eldad knows this so just before uh, it's a tag name right uh, just before slash jmeter so this is one of the famous uh, repository for uh, jmeter if you want to run in a uh, docker container but for jmeter nothing was there then 2 mm-hmm. years ago i created for J- windows based machines you know the pulls for windows it's even less than 500 pulls but for linux if you see it will be like more than a million yeah true so basically most of the servers are like whatever we see in our experience like linux servers <laughs> that's also like, because like, windows they have to we have to pay money for windows os license yeah, right. for server yeah. Uh, so exactly. aws will uh, we have to pay more for windows machines so that's why i don't spin up windows at all i just spin up with macos correct macos yes macos yes we have to pay licensing extra to aws or whatever cloud provider you're using yeah. because they have to pay money to microsoft or apple <laughs> and, and and in in any case i mean that there is no point spinning if if you, if your goal is to generate load Yes. There is no real point to uh, spinning up Windows machines. Uh, the only reason you want to spin up Windows machines is, is if it has any difference on the functionality of, of your client. So if you do client-based, uh, you know, front-end load, ter- uh, load testing, then it might be relevant. But uh, for all other uh, purposes, if your goal is merely to generate load, use the cheapest op- option you have. That, that's, that makes a lot more sense. so Correct. that Correct. that point uh, that what is my point is like is there any of you having a experience of gui tool gui lotus tool in linux any example uh, personally no I, when i use linux i always use the cli option even in jmeter yeah, even if i run jmeter i just run the cli uh, so, so no any gui in linux is that jmeter right you can use jmeter in gui <laughs> okay got it but but if if you look at most of most of the languages if you look at most of the languages involved if, even J- jmeter is based on java right so java okay. java runs the show so you have java you have python you have um, javascript uh go. scala go uh, go yeah the, the dosify is go so all of these language languages are uh, system agnostic right they they have an interpreter or they are compiled on llvm style of compiler like will be there. yeah yeah for rust sorry rust also llvm based uh, so all these languages are you know you you write it once you run it everywhere it's it's not like c or c++ where you literally have to compile it for each distribution or each uh, operating system on its own so unless you use c or c++ to run low test and good luck with that uh, there is not, not not a lot to worry about the operating system itself so to conclude a topic over here so which could be the feature like which could which is having more future in the load testing world or performance engineering world a gui or cli cli right sounds like more cli sounds like it it sounds like it but i don't want to be too conclusive I, I, because i don't really know it sounds like the cli are, are taking over 
but still, Jamie Miller has a lot of a lot of respect in the community because it has been around for a long time, and most people use it. Uh, I think that it, well, it depends on the kind of field you work in, but in some field where they're heavily regulated and customers uh, want to know what you're doing, I think that Jamie Miller would have more respect because it has been used more uh, for a long period of time, and everybody knows what it is. Uh, so so I'm think... kind of correlating the topic with which you spoke on Redline 13. What is the future of our performance engineering and testing, right? So I'm kind of correlating these things there. Uh, so, well, Redline 13 supports both JMeter and Gatling. Yep. So it looks like they kind of uh, enjoy both worlds. Uh, if we look at, for example, Neocortex, uh, Neocortex support JMeter and uh, Load Runner. Uh, and on the website, it, it, they seem to support Locust IO, K6, and Puppeteer. So it looks like most system wants to uh, support both both options. They want to keep all the options on the table. True, true. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually slightly differ from Eldad's view here, from my perspective, uh, Sid. See, for the, when you talk about features, right, whether you want to go with GUIs, ELI, it depends, totally depends on what thing you want, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, say I want very advanced, sophisticated uh, features, then you might not get in uh, CLI based tools. True. Right? But uh, yeah. if you want to have something developer workflow or tester workflow, then CLI gels with that well, very well. Yeah, I agree. I agree on it. Right? So there are two, again, two things, two perspectives. So which you want, what you want, it, it again depends. Uh, Best it's not it, you can. Much, what it, it's what, the, what is the performance that's the engineering world wants, right? Like um, more, we should uh, think like uh, at the end of the day, we as a performance engineers, what features we want. Yes. With respect to your tool or uh, engineer. That's because, correct. Again, you also yeah. need to take a look at the organization you work in, what types of people you work with, uh, uh, what is the industry, the industry yes. you work with. There's a lot of things that goes into it when you choose a tool. But but what I see is the feature is, the, if there's a feature, right, it will be implemented eventually either in CLI or in GUI. Whichever comes first, again, the other tool will take over uh, eventually. Yeah. But sounds like, but uh, what my intention will feel like uh, most of them see, nowadays everybody is moving in like CLI, continuous integration and continuous deployment. So with sounds like more CLI there instead of GI, less GI. GUI, yes, because right? yes, the, because that is yeah, headless automation, touchless automation, and right, yeah. seamless automation. Because of that, uh, CLI takes that part. Major role. Major, yeah, yeah. GUI. But for manual, still people are doing manual approval for production. So production is most of the organizations not completely automated. It stops right before production. Everything. Yeah, and one more thing. Uh, there was a big debate on one topic: automating completely the performance engineering or performance testing. It's not possible. So definitely there is a need of GUI because uh, all our CI, CD may not, uh, you know, detect the performance uh, bottlenecks while running the CLI, CI, CD. That's also a debate, right? Debate uh, topic. Well, yeah. if, if you look at, for example, uh, Locust.io, uh, yes, it's a CLI tool, but they also have a, uh, they, they, spin, they can spin up a, a website, a local website based on Jetty and then you can uh, plug into your website, into this website, you get this nice greenlit uh, website uh, with some parameters that you can insert and run it on, it, it feels like GUI. Yes. Because it is, it, it's a web application. So again, Locus still try to get the best of the both worlds. How successful it is, that's, that's a different uh, topic, but it looks like they're really trying. Yes, you can, there is a button run, stop, uh, number of workers you can mention there in the UI, and then you can just uh, work it. I mean, just execute your scripts. So, like Eldad mentioned, we need a both. Like, uh, it's not like GUI only. It's not like CLI. It's kind of mixed. If it's a need uh, thing, uh, but it looks like both of them are still uh, maybe not equally, but both of them still have a place in the industry. So it looks like most will try to get both. Try Correct. to have it both ways. Correct. Because at, at, at any point of time, you will be using only one tool for performance. 
<laughs> you will not be using two tools right unless there is a different architecture or different protocols uh, supports uh, yeah i would say a blend of both we have to take advantage of because yeah. if you use a cli only tool you're going to have some gui on top of it uh, among, even uh, i think uh, i'm sorry just a sec uh, jagan mentioned that he wants a x unit uh, a style of report to to uh, plug it into the dashboard of his ci cd tool uh, so again you're going to add some layer of um, user interface or graphic user interface on top of that it's going to happen anyway Problem. Correct. Correct. Yes. Yes. Again, uh, say, uh, say for your question, right? If you take a Neo load, Neo load is a GUI based tool, but you need to take uh, more advantage of Neo load CLI as well, so that you complete the circle. Otherwise, you are not using the tool completely for your needs. You are only using half of it. Remaining of you are not leveraging it. So, yeah. with that, can we conclude this like this? Any tool. Uh, CLI is a critical feature from the tool. It right? is must. It's, it's it's a must actually. Yeah, otherwise, the the workflow you cannot. Uh, yeah, it won't deploy. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Again, load runner, no load CLI is there, but it's very limited. But it's there, so you have to at least uh, try to leverage those, or you have to write your own scripts to automate some some of the aspects. Yeah. Well, finally, uh, so. I have one query. Sorry. Uh, yes. About the other the about the the type only because uh, I I can see like a GUI is CLA right. Uh, uh, but uh, if you if you take a JMeter right, like a, mostly we use a JMeter ID to uh, develop a script, but we will execute through command line only right. So correct. Uh, I was using like a JMeter EC2 that is a uh, open source bootstrap script which helps to uh, spin up the, the AWS instance uh, automatically. So I as you see. So, but I think that the topic what I understood like uh, mostly we discuss about like uh, GUI is non GUI, right? Yes. Uh, because I think like all the tools should come with the CLI because that's how they could able to extend uh, extending the, the support on the. Uh, C C D or any 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 level of execution, right? Uh, Correct. Yes, yes, yes. Jagan, I agree con completely. Yeah, one hundred percent agree with that. Yes, all C G A based should should have the flavor of C L I. Yeah. So that's uh, I thought like uh, my from the top right. I was uh, initial. I, I I understood like it's topic about like a GUI versus non GUI. That's where I I I I am pitching on the uh, case it's tool. So yeah, thanks. Sir. Yeah, thank you. So that was a good discussion. Then, then I guess. You conclude the topics and uh, just in a nutshell. So, just highlight topics and conclude that. Yes, yes, Siddh, sure. Thank you, everyone, for joining and taking part of this discussion. Yeah, so we started again tool agnostic, but we have discussed a lot of tools. So, that is one aspect of the discussion. And we came across uh, multiple features of the tools which we do not know. So, I, I guess you would have learned something new in this discussion. So first we have discussed about GUI, uh, the point and click interface uh, of the GUI based tools and CLI again, there is no uh, a point and click, only the editor. And then we discussed about protocols where we have uh, uh, GUI based tools mostly tend to have more protocols support uh, rather than the CLI based because CLI we have to depend on third party libraries or depending uh, or we have to create our own modules or packages. And then again, getting approvals from security team, so that are not there when it comes when it comes to CLI. So we have discussed protocols, then uh, results. So result again, all CLI based tools can provide of uh, provides uh, some basic interface. If you want to deep dive, you need to uh, port that into Grafana or something uh, advanced tools. But on the other hand, uh, commercial tools they tend to have very uh, advanced uh, features in their analysis. So that is uh, another aspect uh, we have seen uh, when compared to CLI versus uh, GUI. And then we have discussed about CI-CD. So CLI based tools gels well with CI-CD because of the command line uh, feature. But rather than other uh, other end, if you see the GUI, uh, there are some workarounds needs to be done and uh, we need to have some kind of support from the vendor. So that we have seen. And then uh, last thing we have seen about the, uh, the distributed mode. 
Yeah, CLI, again, it's very, it depends on the tool you see, right? Uh, JMeter, again, you need to put more effort. But uh, K6 or Locust, again, uh, it is very easy. But commercial tools already comes with the distributed mode. So the setup kind of very easy for us. So no need to spend something uh, time. Uh, you'll, you just give them uh, everything to the infrastructure team. They will deploy it for us. And then we just need to run it. So these are the five points we have seen. So conclusion is, from my perspective, so we should leverage both. So if you have a commercial tool, you need to leverage the CLI end. If you're using the CLI end, you need to uh, become uh, more powerful by leveraging the CLI itself. And uh, you can implement it in, uh, in your workflow, CACD pipeline or uh, developer uh, automation. So you need to just make them work, uh, make them to connect to any flow. So that is your job as a performance tester. Your job should run uh, wherever you are telling to run. So the less work means uh, more productivity. So make use of both CLI and uh, GUI features. Is that good, Sid? Yeah, it's really, really good. It will be helpful for others who is going to listen. Okay, thank you. <laughs> because I never, I didn't plan. I actually thought of planning two to three points, but we have brought uh, again uh, more than that. Yes. So it's good to have all the. That, that's good. Yeah. Thank you, Eldad. Thank you, Sid. Thank you, Jagan, for sharing your use. Uh, I guess uh, this recording should, I think everyone should listen. I don't know how many, of, how many of us listen in our community. Yeah, I will publish it as soon as possible in your YouTube. And I think we have to discuss in uh, some developer conference, this kind no, of topics. No, no, no. When people are listening to this, uh, I mean, podcast, audio everywhere. So I do, I mean, saw somebody... Uh, suggesting your video and this audio in some of the group so oh, the, okay. on whatsapp group actually now in you know clubhouse uh, podcasts are good you can refer somebody referred for the particular topic i oh, don't okay. remember that okay. is into the some other friends mobile i okay. saw good yeah, good thank you something. thank you for that yes. thank you Eldad. Eldad, i think we have to bring this up to a larger forum what do you think Uh, I think, that? I, I think uh, yeah. I... Okay, yeah, sure. I will touch base with them offline. I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, okay. Um, repeat the question. No, I, I thought that we have to bring this up to the larger forum, this kind of discussion. I agree. I, I'll, I'll contact you with, on LinkedIn. Let's see how we can do that because yeah, it's sure. a really, really important topic. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you, Elda. Thank you, everyone, for listening and for joining okay. us. Uh, thank you, Jagan. Yeah, please uh, join again every week. We meet at the same time. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Have a good sure. weekend. Bye. Thank you. Thank you all. If you like my dad's videos, please subscribe to QA Insights channel.